this session. In the last lecture, we were discussing about uh, UML. UML is a modeling language, it is a language used to document object oriented designs and it has become a standard and we were discussing the different views that can be documented, the different diagrams supported by UML using which uh, the views can be documented and so on. Now, let us continue from that point onwards. Before we discuss the different diagrams, let us uh, get some insights on using UML. Uh, one of the prominent authors in this area, in the language of Martin Fowler, UML is large, yes it has lot of symbols and lot of diagrams and growing beast it is constantly growing, more diagrams, notations are coming in, but uh, you do not need all of it in every problem you solve, very true. Even though UML has many diagrams and uh, it has uh, many notations, but then only few of the notations are used all the time and the others are specialized used depending on the requirement. Now, let us look at what Brian Henderson Sellers has to say. When learning the UML, you need to be aware that uh, certain constructs and notations are only helpful in detailed design, while others are useful in requirements analysis, very true. We will see that initially the requirements analysis activity is done, where the requirements are uh, elaborated in the form of an analysis uh, model and we will see that some of the notations are used during analysis and uh, some other notations are used in the detailed design. As we proceed, we will uh, realize what Brian Henderson Sellers remarked. Just to elaborate that, there are five views that we discussed in the last lecture, but are all the views required during the development of a typical system? The answer is no. For a simple system, the ones small examples that we will be doing student assignments and so on, for that only the use case diagram, class diagram and one of the interaction diagrams are sufficient. For some problems, we will need state chart diagram, where we model the states of the system. And if a class in an application has a significant number of states and transitions, we will need to use the state chart diagram, a very commonly used uh, diagram after these three diagrams, use case diagram, class diagram and interaction diagram. But we must remember that uh, if uh, a class has only one state or one or two states and so on, then the diagram becomes trivial and it is not does not help to have this uh, state chart diagram developed for those cases. We would need the deployment diagram when there are number of hardware components in the system and the different parts of the software are installed on the different hardware. Let me repeat that. The deployment diagram is useful when our system has a number of hardware components and different parts of our program are deployed on different hardware components. So, we represent here which hardware component hosts which uh, part of the code. So, when the system has many hardware components, we will use a deployment diagram. Now, let us start discussing about the use case diagram. We were uh, remarking that uh, this is the central diagram captures the user's view. 
whenever a system is developed, we first capture the user's view, what the user wants, we document it and based on the user requirements, we start development and uh, this model captures the user's view. We uh, also get these diagrams verified by the user and therefore, these diagrams are to be extremely simple because users otherwise cannot understand it. So, the use case modeling is simple set of notations, diagrams, intuitive, but then the caution is that we have to do it carefully because any mistake in use case modeling will reflect in the other models because the other models are developed based on the use case model. as uh, we were uh, discussing in the previous lecture, the use case model is typically the first one to be developed during system development and it is the diagram is used is use case diagram and based on this the other views are constructed the structural view, behavioral view, environmental view, implementation view and so on. But we must understand that even though it is a object oriented modeling, but then the use case model is an exception. It is actually a functional model of a system. It models what are the functionalities to be supported by the system. This is unlike the other models where we actually only model the objects and uh, the issues associated with objects, but in a use case model, we only identify the functionalities supported by the system and we document functionalities and uh, therefore, it is uh, appropriate to say that this is a functional model of a system, not an object model. Let us start with something very simple. The use case diagram consists of many use cases, but what exactly is a use case? A use case is a case of use that is if we have a system a way in which it will be used by the users. Just to give an example, if we have a library software installed in our library, then the different ways of using the library software will be that the members will query availability of books, they will issue books, return books, the librarian may create books might create members, delete members. So, these are the different ways in which the library system is used or these are the different cases of use of the library software and each of these is a use case and each use case corresponds to a high level requirement. each use case actually describes a behavior of the system that what the user can do, what input can do and how will the system behave. But then we can say that this is a black box view of the system in the sense that the internals are not revealed, the internal structure of the system is not revealed. But if we look deeper into a use case, a use case consists of several scenarios. So, let me just uh, repeat that aspect that a use case model consists of number of use cases, but if we look at each use case, each use case has a number of scenarios that are tied together by a common goal. What we mean by that is that let us say 
you want to issue a book. So, the issue book is a huge case, it is a case of huge by the library member, but then there can be different scenarios of issue. In one scenario, a member try to issue a book, produce the library card, it was scanned and it was recorded, the receipt printed and the library the, and the member could get the book. But in another scenario of use, the member produced the book and the library card and then the system displayed that uh, your over quota cannot issue the book, please return some books and then only you can issue the book. So, that is another scenario. A third scenario may be once the member try to issue a book with a book and the member card it was scanned and the system displayed that the book is a reference book cannot be issued out. In a fourth scenario for the same issue book use case may be that the member took the book and the card and the scanner scanned and then the system displayed your membership has expired, please renew the, your membership and then you can issue the book and so on. So, for the same issue book use case we have a number of scenarios and that is very common. Every use case typically has a number of scenarios of use. We are just taking an example of a library information system and the use cases are the different ways in which the users can use the library software, issue book, query book, return book, create member, add book etcetera. These are all use cases, we need to document each of this in the use case model. But uh, one question that comes to mind is that if we identify use cases, these are functions to be performed by the software, but then are these independent? Can we just have any functionality invoked by the user irrespective of the other functionalities that have already been invoked? If the effect of one functionality depends on another functionality that was invoked, then we say that there is a dependency. When we draw the diagram, we draw them as if they are independent of each other, but we must remember that uh, use cases are actually dependent. Some of the use cases at least are dependent on each other, just to give an example that uh, there are two use cases in the library software, one is renew book and the other is reserve book. Now, let us say another user has invoked the reserve book use case and has reserved a particular book, then the member who had taken that book once he tries to renew the book, it will not renew basically because uh, of the reservation by another member. So, the reserve book impacts the functionality of the renew book and they are dependent. Even though they are represented as independent use cases, but internally they are dependent. So, during the working of the renew book the implementation, a check is made to see if the book has been reserved by using the reserve book use case. Just to summarize that uh, when we represent the use cases, we represent them as if they are all independent, 
but we must uh, understand that uh, there may be dependencies among some of the use cases. Now, let us look at the first example of the diagram. As I mentioned that the diagrams are extremely simple, even a user who is not familiar with system development should be also able to understand the diagram and uh, give his comments. This is the first example. The system is the tic tac toe, this is the software. We draw the boundary of the software to indicate what are the functionalities or use cases supported by the software. And each use case we draw here as ellipse and write the name of the use case. This software tic tac toe game is extremely simple software has only one functionality that is play move and that is the use case play move use case. And the user we represent on the diagram in the use case diagram by a stick icon symbol and we write the class of the user that is a player. The type of the user is player. We might have uh, in a more sophisticated game, we might have configuration of the game. Maybe you will have a system administrator or a program administrator who can configure the game. Then we will draw another user with a stick icon and we will write here system administrator who can invoke the configure game use case. So, each use case is represented as an ellipse. The user is represented who will use this, there can be more than two classes of users, these are not individual users just see these are not uh, proper nouns, these are common nouns because this is type of user. And the line that is drawn between them, between the use case and the user, we call it as the communicates relation that is uh, the player uses the play move use case. So, the diagram is very simple in the rectangle we represent the software inside we write the use cases each with ellipse and the name annotated name of the use case annotated on each of the ellipse and we identify which user uses this use case and we draw a line which is the communicates relation. Now, let us just try to answer some question that we might have in mind that uh, what is the role of the use case diagram, we just saw one diagram. If we draw this diagram, how does it help? This is actually the starting point, it serves as the requirement specification, a graphical requirement specification. and. Uh, as we proceed in this course, we will see that based on this model, the other models should get developed. We will refine this model into the other models. But then another question is that okay, we can understand that the use cases themselves are elaborated or refined into the other models, but how about the actors? For example, we identified the player, administrator and so on are the users of the software. How does this help? Because uh, surely identifying the specific type of user who will use this does not help in the implementation that is it appears from a first understanding, but then if we look deeper. So, this is the use case diagram and we identify various categories of users who will use this. So, this user is using these three use cases and this is using two use cases and so on. By identifying the different categories of 
users in the later development we will know that who will actually use this functionality is it a factory worker or is it the manager or is it the technical administrator and identifying this helps because finally during the user interface development we normally develop different types of interfaces for different categories of user if he is a factory worker he is not conversant with the software and so on we will try to give a very simple interface we will design a very usable interface for the factory worker for the technical administrator who is very familiar with computer we will try to give a interface which may be difficult not very so user friendly but then he can do it very fast he can invoke the functionality very fast even though it may not be very user friendly so for the technical administrator speed of use is more important than the usability so and the manager uses uh, almost every day and uh, has some familiarity with software so for him we will develop a different types of interface so identifying the users definitely helps in designing the interface necessary may be useful in developing authentication login information that who which user will see what functionality on his login and also it helps in preparing appropriate documents the document that is prepared for the factory worker has to be understood by the factory worker so it has to be in simple language with illustrations diagrams and so on for the technical administrator the manual can be more technical and for the manager it may be something intermediate now let us see how the use cases are represented I already seen a diagram I seen that use case is represented by an ellipse the boundary of the system is a rectangle it shows that what are the use cases contained in the system the users are represented by a stick person icon in the terminology of UML we call the users as the actors. So, in the tic tac toe we have this uh, player is a actor and the play move is the use case and uh, the line is called as the communication relationship between the use case and the actor and we can also model external systems that is software which is external to what is being developed software and hardware this is the one is, is being developed but it may take help of already existing software and hardware for example we might have a backup functionality which is invoked once the play move is complete the backup gets invoked and the backup is taken on a external system. So, the external system is also a stick icon slightly counter intuitive that a system is represented as a stick icon, but then the objective of UML was to have a simple set of notations. If we have too many notations, then it becomes very difficult to draw the diagram, to understand the diagram and so on. To simplify a language, we need to minimize the number of symbols that are supported by the system. So, we use the same 
symbol as an actor, the external system is also an actor, but we write below it within this symbol which is called as Gilmet external system. So, the actor is stereotyped or we give a attribute of the actor saying that it is an external system. But what about a connection? We said that the line is a connection. We say that the use case and the actor are associated by having this line drawn and it actually represents the usage relation between the use case and the actor. But one thing we must need to remember that uh, this line does not really indicate that some data is input by the user. No, it may be that just invokes it, may be just clicks on a button and invokes the use case need not enter any data just invokes. Uh, with this uh, very basic introduction to the use case model, we will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture where we will elaborate this with more notations and examples and uh, we will try to model slightly more uh, complex uh, software this tic tac toe game is a very simple software having only one use case. So, we will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you.